What's up everyone, Art at Patience Metal Fab, and you're joining me for another episode on the Group B rally car build. Now if you haven't seen the last couple, I'll put them down in the description so you can check them out and get caught up. But really the big thing we've been doing is the cage work on the inside of the car. You can see that a majority of it is done. Uh, it's just tacked in at the moment because we are still gonna have to take it apart in order to blast the car. And we're also missing door bars right now. We're keeping those out so we can get in and out of the car easier. We are also moving on to the front of the vehicle because it's gonna have an integrated cage portion in the engine bay. And I'm gonna flash up a couple of photos in this video so you guys know what we're dealing with. Basically, the owner wants the cage to be as true to 80s form as possible, but we only have a few examples to work off of. So what we see in pictures is what we're trying to recreate here. Now you can see that Andrew's already been making some little pieces to see how the fitment of the bars is gonna be, but ultimately he's gonna need to cut into the actual firewall area in order to integrate the bars into the A pillars. That's a bit of a scary thing because we only have those pictures to go off and you have a lot of components that are missing right now, like the steering column and brake booster that are gonna be in the way. So he's gonna have to calculate that very quickly before he starts cutting into an incredibly rare chassis like this. The engine bay tubing portion is gonna be very tricky, as I mentioned, because you're working three-dimensionally. We need to weld the inch and a half tubing onto here, but it also has to go through where the HVAC was through the firewall and attach that A pillar. So if you wanna show the tubing that we're working with, it's a relatively large chunk. And in lieu of cutting this all apart, because we wanna make it a nice tight fit and be able to weld onto the existing metal, what Andrew's done is developed a really cool system. So I want him to show you uh, how he's gonna get this tube in. So what we do here is we drill a tiny pilot hole through the hole, or through the firewall. It is now big because I've messed with it, but we will set a slice in there so that the little piece of rod fits exactly through on center. You can see Andrew's nearly there. It's just a matter of kind of shaving down the inside of this so this sits a little more flush and is able to hit his mark. And you can see what I said about having to measure a bunch of times and cut once. Well, it's kind of measure a bunch of times, cut and sand a bunch of times in order for that to fit. Then once he gets that, he can tack it into place and then do it all over again on this side, which it may or may not be easier considering we have more open space, but at the same time, we have more components that are gonna be going in here. Before Andrew can keep going with the cage, we gotta figure out seating position and seat placement. And we have a big guy, little car issue. And another issue is that there is a gas tank that's gonna be fitted under here. Now, normally we could cut this portion out and sink the seat about five inches lower than it is and avoid this problem, especially when you're wearing a helmet. But because of FIA rules, we can't do that. Essentially, we're gonna have to put this seat as far back as we can and have the driver uh, kind of nestle into here. Andrew's put in a lot of work on the front end here and it's really coming together. You saw some of the last clips of him cutting out this portion and trying to test fit these strut bars on both sides. He's got them in now and then he welded an extra crossbar right here with some brackets. Basically, this is as close to group B homologation as we can get judging from all the media that we were able to find. Now the next thing we're gonna be doing is moving on to the door bars. You can see he's got one of them cut and tack welded right here. And I'm gonna step over the dragon. He's cutting two more for the lower and upper section to form that X bar on here. Now after we do that, and on the driver's side as well, we should have a more or less complete cage, uh, at least tacked in before all the finishing welds to make it absolutely solid.
like this. Seats have changed a lot since 1986 when this car would have run in Group B. Um, the seats are a lot bigger. There's a lot more to them. One of the cool features, like Art pointed out, seat back support. That is exclusive to race tech, um, being integrated into the seat itself. You don't have to drill into the composites for an actual mounting point for it. Um, really, uh, really cool feature, but adds complexity to the mounting, obviously. The other thing here, like you said, is that we got a gas tank underneath this seat, which is crazy in itself, but it makes it so that we can't get this seat down as far as we normally would. So the brackets have to be outboard of the tank itself, and the seat has to be high enough in the car to clear it while still being low enough to get a six foot four driver in here, which is one of the reasons this seat in particular is gonna get reclined as much as it is. And then we're gonna to have to do an aftermarket pedal box and a column in here to bring those back to the driver, just because there's too many constraints in here to be able to do everything 100% the way it would have been done back in 86. I mentioned that those seats are gonna be a challenge and the first thing is getting a mounting position. So you see this is the OEM one right here and essentially we needed it about four or five inches back. So what Andrew did was recreate what we already had and offset it right here. So not only is it gonna be able to mount the seat right here, but also uh, the portion of the harness and make sure it's all rigid and it's gonna clear that gas tank underneath. So we're not gonna have any problems. Now he's done this one as a bit of a trial and error and then we're gonna be doing the passenger side that I'm gonna show you this stuff by step on. finished up on both sides of the rear seat mount bracket he's got to move on to the front and you see the OEM ones right here really the problem is that they're about four inches too far up and what we really have to do to make it perfect if we wanted it totally flush we'd have to cut structure out of the car and then reinforce it well one of the issues before we do any sort of cutting is that there's a fuel tank back here as I mentioned so we have to accommodate for that their solution was to cut a notch out of the floor and then mount a rod with threaded provisions that'll mount both the the front of the seat and also the bottom of the harness. Andrew's got what looks like a medieval weapon here, but this is actually the piece we were talking about for the rear seat mount, the inner portion. So really the challenge is you have a, let's say three and a half foot area. You're trying to mount a bracket in the center and you're trying to make sure that it's level and straight with about three, four other points with the seat mounts. And so this is the best way. You come up with a jig essentially. You see it's bolted in right here and then it's gonna lay in there perfectly. gives you a little bit of a better idea of that jig. So this obviously won't remain here. It just sets the height and basically three dimensional placement of that bracket. So now we've got a seat mount here, 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 and then uh, one on each side of here.
There you have it, the seat is mounted and first try, which means that Andrew absolutely nailed all of the measurements that he took, which is awesome. Now, one thing I was thinking while sitting in here is to the average person, you might think of a project like this and go, well, it's just mounting two seats. How long could it take and how much could it cost? The reality is much more than you think. In this case, we've had over two days of fabrication into getting these two seats mounted once the passenger seat is in. And Andrew's not even done yet. He still has to do finishing welds. He still has to do some little brackets and things to make it absolutely perfect. So it kind of gives you an idea of how much effort goes into a custom fabrication job like this. With that said, we're just starting the custom fabrication on the inside of this car. The cage is obviously mocked up in here, but all these tacks have to get broken. It has to get taken apart and then get blasted. And once it comes back, reassembled, finishing welds on all of that, all of the seat mounting has to be finalized, and then we move on to some of the other stuff. A good example is the pedal box setup. So that's going to be a floor mounted unit, which means we're going to have to cut all of this out and box it and really tailor it to the driver. Uh, another thing is with the seat seats being so wide, we've had to offset them a little bit to the driver's side exterior, which means the steering column is not centered anymore. And we're going to be kind of starting from scratch, making a custom steering column and linkage for this car as well. Like I mentioned, all of these things on paper start uh, easy enough, but then you start really diving into the process. And when one thing gets moved, something else follows. And that's when the real fabrication begins. We've got the harness bar just mocked up right now. Andrew cut it deliberately longer because we're gonna have the owner of the car come through, sit in the seat, and then we can adjust to his height because it has to be about 10% of the top of the shoulder. So there's a little bit of play, but not much. It's very important that you get the harness bar in the right orientation. Otherwise, too high, too low, in the case of an accident, it really hurt you. Now, there's a couple other little things that we're gonna have to do. Some gusset bars up here, and then an FIA bar, basically required for rallying purposes. But other than that, the cage is pretty much wrapped up. Now, that's probably a good way to also wrap up this episode. In the next one, we're gonna start with putting in some of these body reinforcements that you see here. So Andrew's trying to figure out placement and how those are gonna weld in. So that's gonna be a really exciting one. And then we're gonna keep chugging away on finishing that cage. And eventually, we're gonna be uh, tearing it all down to send off to plastic. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We've got a lot more to come on this car. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and we'll see you in the next one.